I just wanted to say that I'm uh, very pleased to be back here once again. The uh, first time was uh, give a speech, and this was 12 years ago in 2012. And um, since that time, this conference uh, and we're, has turned into uh, one of the uh, premier places uh, for for hipness to convene. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in Northern Europe, and I'm very proud of this. Uh, the first time I spoke here, I spoke about Pussy Riot, the Russian opposition uh, band that had just been arrested, uh, but were at that time unknown outside of Moscow. Um, since then, they've made a stellar career, thanks to me, of course. But, <laughs> um, but uh, what, this year we have um, 174 artists from uh, 35 countries that will be performing all kinds of music here, um, which is, uh, in the, I think, is one of the uh, sort of premier events around here, no matter what. So we have music across all genres and across various forms of art and discipline. So um, since. Today, uh, I heard that Helen had read one of my speeches. Um, not, not, one of the, well, not one of these speeches, but one of the kind of the more official ones I gave. gave. Um, and I had this line in it, it was actually given 10 years ago, and the line in it is that um, uh, what brought us here won't take us any further. That seems to have, for some reason, people keep quoting it. Um, <laughs> Uh, taxi drivers, uh, especially like to put it on the back of their of the car seat. So I'm not sure what that means. Because you're sitting there and you see this thing and it said, "What uh, brought you here won't take you any further." And then it's got your name under it. You go, okay. What does it mean? I don't know. It's a kind of a philosophical issue. Um, but um, I guess it means it's the end of the ride or something. I don't know. In any case. I did want to say that that line, line that seems to be quoted all the time uh, was spawned by two things. Uh, one was the fast pace of technological development already in 2014, um, and especially not just the fact that you had an iPhone or something, but rather in realms that we had not seen this before, especially with the rise of social media. but. Okay, social media is nice. You can put up pictures of your cat or something, but uh, <laughs> but in fact, the use of social uh, social media to spread disinformation and to actually affect the political process, which led to all kinds of things, uh, among them um, the uh, Brexit, uh, which clearly afterwards we realized uh, was influenced in a big way by countries outside the UK uh, using social media, and then even more so the case was the case with the US presidential elections in 2016. What we saw was that new technologies are coming in and affecting the way that we have had democracy um, up till that time. And so um, that was what was the inspiration for the line back then. Um, but the other thing that happened in 2014 was the uh, invasion and occupation of Crimea, um, which struck me already then as the end of the what we had called the post-Cold War era. Uh, so that um, a whole series of rules that we had, all of us practically, unless you're over 80, you know, I'm not that old, um, had grown up under. Um, and what, what the invasion of Crimea 10 years ago meant was that um, the basic rules that had, by which we had operated since World War II did not apply anymore. You, in fact, the UN Charter said that you, know, you may not use aggression, you may not use force to change borders. And suddenly we saw this happening. Uh, and the, the real fun was that no one really cared. It was like, fine, yeah, okay, they did that, but nothing, nothing really happened after the uh, after the occupation of Crimea. In fact, the next year, Angela Merkel and the man who's going to be the next Secretary General of NATO, Mark Rutte, 
signed the uh, Nord Stream 2 agreement. So Russia, great, fine. Okay, well, I guess there are no consequences to ruining the, the treaty basis of uh, the post cold of the post war, <coughs> um, which was not only the UN Charter but the OSCE uh, Helsinki Final Act, which was again a cornerstone of peace and security in Europe from 1975. The Budapest Memorandum that basically said, okay, Ukraine, you have to give up your nukes, you have to give up your your uh, strategic bombers and your rockets, and in return, we, will, we, the United States, will guarantee your territorial integrity forever. Well, it didn't turn out that way, did it? Um, in 2014, or it didn't work that way in, um, in 2022, when... Um, not only had all the treaty pillars been been ruined, but um, we saw a, a full-scale invasion uh, of the kind that we had not seen in Europe since 20, well, since 1940, well, 1939 actually, but the war ended in 1945. So we're in a new era. And this was, uh, I mean, especially came to mind this past weekend, which was the second anniversary of the discovery of the horrors of Bucha, where we saw mass killings of, of um, civilians, mass rapes, uh, torture chambers. I mean, all these horrible things that uh, in 2014, we're like, oh, this was all, this could never happen. Well, this is happening. And so, Basically, the rest of the world, though I was very nervous in 2014, but um, basically what we, we have seen the end of um, is the post-Cold War era. That was the name that was given to this era. And, um, and sorry, I mean, my daughters were sending me SMSs about whether she can get into TMW. But <laughs> 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 but no, 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 no. <laughs> so we're in this. We have we we are in this new era um, where we have now we have in addition to what we had back then we have artificial intelligence which uh, has made such leaps and and bounds that um, we have even more reason to worry about the uh, integrity of democracy and elections, the fakes. All these things are happening. Um, that we live in a different world. Um, Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, um, in the beginning of the 19th century, has this uh, line which he says, the owl of Minerva only takes flight at dusk. Which he by the owl of Minerva. Minerva or Athena is the goddess of wisdom, and owl, the owl is the symbol of, of Minerva, but of wisdom. And when he said that it takes flight only at dusk, what he meant to say, what he did say it was basically that we don't know the end, we don't understand our historical period until it's ending. And I think where we are right now is that we're at the end of, um, or clearly at the end of a period in which, looking at your ages, most of you have lived in exclusively, not even, well, there's some people here, I can see that. <laughs> most, of, most of you looking at your hair color or its presence in the, in the case of males, have spent most, you have spent your adult life living in the post-Cold War era. A period when low interest rates, peace in the world, and now we live in an era in which it's not like that anymore. And we have scary new technologies. We have the most brutal kind of you know, medieval tortures and brutal killings of the sort that we thought everyone thought it was over forever. And so <clears throat> here we are at the dusk of the Kumbaya, La La Land period known as the post-Cold War era. And we know it's ending, we know it's over, we don't know what lies ahead. But what I count on is that at Tiny Music Week, 
with all of these great minds here, creative people who actually have views other than the standard political ones that we see and we read about, that you might actually come up with some new ideas. And that's why I come here every year, uh, because there are always new ideas here. There's new music. I went to a great concert last night here with some finno ubric bands. If you don't know what finno ubric is, well, you can learn. Um, <laughs> but in any case, um, this is a place where I hope uh, we can get new, new ideas. Uh, <clears throat> Ezra Pound said, poets are the antennae of the race. Uh, poets, no one reads poetry anymore except in Estonia, um, <laughs> where they sell more poetry books than you do in the US per author, but anyway. Uh, but poets are, uh, were the antennae of the race. I'd like to think of Tallinn Music Week as one of the antennae uh, for at least Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you.